like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell. Today we're going to be talking about the time I woke up in the bushes. So it was the fall of 2013, Tennessee was playing Georgia at Neyland Stadium. And let me preface this, there are three big games that everybody wants to go to in Knoxville. Whether it be Tennessee versus Florida, Tennessee versus Georgia, Tennessee versus Alabama. Whenever those three schools come, no matter what our chances of winning or losing are, it doesn't matter, people still want to go and see them. So the night before, I got really hammered that night. I woke up, my stomach wasn't feeling too well. Putting down food was out of the plans. All I had to eat that day was a Pop-Tart in the morning and one taco. And then I had whiskey in my system too. And this is going into a game that's at 3.30 where it's hot and you're going to be sweating like a motherfucker. So I ain't had enough water or enough food. Already starting off great. So to start off the game, Tennessee's not playing too hot. Offense can't get anything going. The defense ain't looking like they can really stop anything. So me and my friend decided, you know, what? we might as well just leave early. So we walk halfway through the tunnel or behind the seats and everything. And we just hear this huge eruption. Like the stadium is shaking, literally. Tennessee had just blocked a punt and recovered it in Georgia's uh, territory. So at this point, we stop in the direction we go and immediately run back to our seats. See what we missed. And then we realize, you know what? We ain't going to leave. This shit just got good. The momentum has swung. Tennessee has all of the offensive momentum defensively. They're making all the stops they need to. And that taught me something that day. That no matter how bad a team is getting killed, don't leave until it's clear they're not going to make a comeback. So I've learned multiple times watching Tennessee play, whether it be against Florida, uh, who else? South Carolina. Appalachian State, damn near anybody they would play if they are losing, they're going to come back. Hell, against Georgia in years after that. But uh, Tennessee would end up losing in Tennessee fashion as Pig Howard fumbled reaching for the pylon in overtime. So this high of winning the game, or possibly winning the game, is now become this low of, ah, shit, we lost again, typical Tennessee. So the mood is down. You can feel it everywhere on campus, just walking around. Everybody's down in the dumps. Luckily, my friend had a um, pick-me-up. That was my birthday gift that was going to help elevate my mood. So I said, all right, I'll meet you at our friend's place. I just got to go eat some food real quick. We was cool. So all I ate was a bowl of ramen and another Pop-Tart. That is it, a bowl of ramen and another Pop-Tart. So for the entire day, I've had two Pop-Tarts, one taco, and a bowl of ramen in my system. All day, and it is nighttime now, mind you. So we go over to my friend's place. I take said pick-me-up. Wait for it to kick in, give it 30 minutes. I'm starting to feel it. Me and my friend take like three shots of whiskey and then we go to this party. It was um the fraternity he used to be in back when he was still going at UT that I later joined. And um at the time I didn't join yet. So I was I was a guest at this party. So we go there, they have like four kegs, two live bands, like a whole bunch of people. Like this shit is gonna be popping. It's like like the parties you see on Project X and all them stereotypical college movies and shit. It was like that. So throughout the night, I'm feeling good. I'm just drinking beer, um, shots, jello shots, with very little food in my stomach, and then the pick me up. So I'm feeling really good. Like at one point, the second band started performing, and for some reason, everybody's jumping up and down like hype. And then there's a beach ball, and the goal is to keep it up and make sure it doesn't hit, touch the ground. I don't know why. I don't even know what happens if it does touch the ground, if anything even happens. But. I don't give a fuck. I'm drunk. I'm having fun. So at one point, I'm about to get another drink. And next thing I know, I feel something. And it ain't. It don't feel too good. Like, wait a minute. And there is that moment when you get drunk that everything feels good. And then one moment, everything just slows down, whether it be your stomach. That moment where it's like, hold on, wait a minute. We need to reassess what we just put inside our body. Pause. So I'll walk outside, see one of the fraternity brothers. He's like, well, you don't look too good. I'm like... I'm fucked up, and then I just throw up right in front of them. I don't get it on the shoes or nothing, but I just throw it right in front of them, and then I drunkenly walk over to the bushes, and I see my friend over there, so we just sit down, we talking or whatever, just drunk bullshitting, and I throw up two more times, and then the next thing I know, I remember waking up in the same spot I was sitting in, confused, because it's sunny outside now, no one's sitting to my right anymore. And I feel a, like a tire because a car was parked behind me. 
I'm just like, what the fuck? And I'm still drunk too, mind you. So I check my phone, see, oh, it's nine o'clock. So I drunkenly walk back to my crib, which is only like two and a half blocks away. So it's not too far. And then as soon as I get in, I call my friend. It's like, hey, guess where I woke up this morning? He's like, uh, George's? That was our friend's place, by the way. I said, no, I woke up in the bushes. Come to find out, this dude had left to go fuck with some girl. I don't even know if he actually even did. So the moral of the story is sometimes even your best friend might leave you to try to get some pussy. Thank you for watching.